Well, I got back from the fairs, schooled Stonebridge Dolce, and uh, gave a little schooler to a more Diener uh, in preparation for Sunday. I went pretty hard with him today. I think he needed a little shake up. So uh, I went a little hard with him today. We'll see if it pays off on Sunday or not, but he seemed fine afterwards. Now, uh, I found it so interesting. Uh, everybody messaged me yesterday, how did Pete and Jimmy train? How did Pete and Jimmy train? How did Pete and Jimmy train? And I told everybody we had a great day training. Yeah, Slim Jimmy wasn't quite awesome, but he's a good horse. You know, I'm sure he'll persevere. And um, it wasn't like people were dumping their shares. Today. I see what you do. <laughs> I see all the emails. So it wasn't like people were dumping their shares, but they were getting, they were testing the open market, let's say. So we get the super final for 300, and then the Ohio Breeders, what, 30 or 40, and then that's it for Jimmy this year. He drew six, uh, an interesting draw, and a, and a good field, so I think and hope he'll be fine. But uh, I just find it so interesting, as soon as I give anybody any unfavorable and make no mistake it wouldn't shock me if slim jimmy would out race like a monster on sunday night there is nothing in his blood or on his person that would make me believe he can't compete at a top level on sunday night is his blood perfect no it's not was he perfect training no we had to make some shoeing adjustments afterwards but from what i saw uh, just in a very short jogging session today with him i was very happy now I'm going to train him again tomorrow, maybe a mile and maybe a mile and 25, 20, 15, something like that. Not enough to tax his lungs, his airway, but enough where I can get a look and say, okay, with these shoes on, is he going to touch that elbow? Uh, I wasn't surprised he hit it the other day with the flip flops on, but we really had to make a change. We did. I think what we have on him now is uh, is more than enough to do the trick, but I'll know more tomorrow. But I just found it so interesting how people. I see all the Slim Jimmy for sale, Slim Jimmy for sale. I, I guess I don't blame you, but at the same time, uh, I always have to be very careful and guarded about what I say because those types of issues happen, but at the same time, I'm not gonna come out and say, oh, he trained awesome, when he didn't. I'm gonna give everybody the straight goods because that's fair, that's how it should be. So, uh, what else took place? So we went to the fair today. We had a great day at the fair. Ah, my girl of Tom rolled off the five eights, but I was really careful with her leaving the gate. And we had taken, put it this way, we've had the five eights round, so the heavier trotting shoes off of her for three starts, she's made breaks in two of them. I don't want all that weight on her, but I, I'm left in a position. Do I put the weight back on her going into Scioto, or I just say, hey, it was a deep track and a big filly, and don't worry about it. I'm gonna mull that over, I think, over the next uh, over the next couple of days. There's a number of ways we can fix that. We can put a heavier shoe on her, we can put the bell boots back on her, we can put a toe weight on her if we want. There's a number of ways to rectify that weight issue if that's indeed what I believe it is. What she did do was accelerate the straightaways today. I had put her in play in the turn because she's never really had an issue with that turn. And I really wasn't accelerating that much. I just wanted to get the guy out of the two hole and tire him out. The front end horses were, were decent fillies. They weren't walkovers. And I wanted them out of the two hole to tire them out. That's exactly what happened. But in doing so, I think I kind of um, confused of Tom a little bit. She kind of crept out three wide when really, if we had been on the same page, um, I really just wanted her to stay where she was. So she rolled off momentarily, ended up third, whatever. It's not the end of the world. Um, I was uh, extremely happy with uh extremely happy with purple aura again i mean she's just she's turning into a nice filly and the filly make no mistake the one that was in behind her i watched that filly win once if not twice this year she looks good and uh, purple aura went a good mile to beat her uh and then one two skip a few i just went what i had to it was so funny earlier in the day so i guess i'll preface this with the first part of this story uh mama knows best race good get picked off fair and square and charming nancy's been a pretty good uh, B track and, and Buckeye Philly all year. She was a decent Philly last year. Uh, and Ver Vernon Beachy obviously is a good horseman. I see him do really well with a number of the horses he has. And, you know, he got that Philly from Chris Beaver. So Chris Beaver's no dummy. So clearly, by by, <laughs> by definition alone, Vernon Beachy's a good horseman if he can take that horse from, uh, from Chris Beaver and do well with her this year. So, um... Uh, Charming Nancy, 
I thought we had everything the way he wanted or the one horse run behind the gate and he's looking for a recall I don't even know if they give recalls at the fairs but he was hollering for one because he looked like the horse to beat uh, no life rafts were sent his way he was on his own he made a break I thought maybe he'd actually run into Charming Nancy which was okay by me and then that would even set the race up better for I'm a Lovely Lady um, around the first turn I, when the three I was actually hoping the three didn't make a break I was going to make front um, but he did he made a break I ended up making front with um, with Mama Knows Best now I'll be honest I'll be up front I thought it was over I thought when she made front looking at what I just saw took, take place going into the first turn the only horse in my mind that could have escaped that unscathed was I'm a Lovely Lady okay who cares she beats me she beats me um, down the back stretch, you know, that charming Nancy raced great, man. She, she raced good. And the son of a bitch around the last turn, his head falls broke. We're halfway down the lane. He looks over at me. Hey, Anthony. He said something. I heard him say my name. I said, you son of a bitch. I always do that. That's my move. You don't do my move. You, you don't do my move. So, uh, he kind of rubbed it in a little bit. I said, okay, fine. So I come out in the track. Uh, he beats me fair and square. His filly race good. Mama race good. I'm a lovely lady. He's a little flat. We're going to take a closer look at her blood tomorrow. You know, she hasn't been as gritty since she got roughed up the night that I got parked the whole way with her. Then got stretched out with Luke. Now, we know she's not bleeding. We've scoped her a number of times. There's got to be something in there. Something's causing her to be a little flat. Uh, and she, it wasn't that she was bad the other night. She just was okay. So uh, we come out in the track last race. One, two, skip a few. I score her down. Listen, you guys, you don't, you don't understand what it's like to be one, two, skip a few. This is a filly that that looked choppy and rough her whole life. Never hit the trot without hobbles on till the new year. You know, looked desperate her whole life and just got a little bit better. But she works harder. She wears more weight on her feet than any other horse on the track. She is a five eighths round bar shoe on up front. Not not an egg bar, but through the middle what I would call a pin bar. For whatever reason, that's the name I've always given it. Um, a pin bar, heavy shoe with a pin bar, toe weights, and two sets of bell boots. Actually, I don't know if she wears toe weights, but she wears two sets of bell boots. A lot of weight for a little girl. June full, always been a little choppy, a little pacey in the turns. And I have to warm her up. Like her two trips, every time she races, the second trip is a mile around 215, 220. For those of you out there that know, you know that's a lot for a two-year-old. So she works harder. She works harder than every other horse on the track, guaranteed. I score her down, and she's choppy and out of gear, but it's almost like she knows, right? She goes, all right, just relax. I'm just getting my get my just getting my game face on. So um, Vernon Beachy pulls up. Hey, your filly looks a little choppy there. <laughs> oh, yeah? Don't worry. Vernon, I'll have the wrinkles out of her before they say go, which I did. Uh, we're, we're coming to the half, and I, I was just going to, I knew we were going none, none, and I didn't care, right? I just come first over, and I said, I'll just sit out here. I don't know what's on the front end, but I have the best horse on the track. That I'm certain of. And then Keith Cash makes a break, gets out of the way. Old Vernon stuffs his feet up in there. Okay, game on. I, it doesn't matter. You're not going to beat me. So we start into the back stretch, and I just gas them. You know, it's not like we get, we're on my only two eight or something. Uh, but around the last turn, I'm looking at, and I see him. I know you. I know he said to me, "Oh my, so and so said, uh, you know, you gave me a shout out in one of your videos." Yeah, yeah, you're gonna get a shout out. Yeah, and I saw you looking. I know that you looked right at me in the last turn, unless you're short sighted, because I was so far ahead of you. Unless you're short sighted, you saw me looking. We came out of the turn. I just put the whip away and I just let her coast. Um, but one, two, skip a few. Just e e to not love her would be to not love the equine breed because she is the epitome of a hardworking animal. I, 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 every time I sit behind her, I just, you know, she's so tough. You no, know, didn't set any world records today. Didn't do anything special. Just got the job done and went home. And that's again, that's the biggest thing I love about her. She, she gets her game face on, does her work. And home we go. So, uh, great day at the Ferris. Then we, uh, I schooled Stonebridge Dolce. She's ready to go. I spoke to Dr. Stiller. Stonebridge Farms bought this horse back, sent it to me, and I was supposed to sell shares to you. She just looked so pitiful her whole life. I couldn't. It'd be like trying to sell a, a broken mirror. So I, I didn't. So I'm left with the lion's share of Stonebridge Dolce. She looked good today. 
I was happy with her. I told Dr. Stiller, I, I think we will keep her. Uh, we will keep her and um, we will keep the filly and we will um, qualify her, race her a few times and probably turn her out for the fall. That's my plan with Stonebridge Dolce. She has the tools to be a good horse. She's such a cow sometimes though. I couldn't get her out of the barn. She wouldn't come out of the barn. Finally, we got her out of the barn and then just go to the track like a good horse. Never did a thing wrong on the racetrack or to the track. Just had a chore getting her out of the barn. She just does this, these stupid things sometimes, but um, she was good today. And then Amor Diener was good also. Had the vet look at him tomorrow. And then back to Tim's, he goes off to Philadelphia. So that is where we're at right now. We got three going tonight. So and Sue had a little flipper yesterday and uh, laid down, I guess, and was acting up two days ago. I thought she trained awesome before I went back to Ontario. Yes, she's a little crazy, um, but I like her. I like that filly, and uh, if she get her, you know, between, if she just, by the sounds of her history, it's not the first time she's acted up, so if she gets her head back on straight for tonight, it should be a good night. Even though we have the eight hole, I'm super excited to race Rose Run. Uh, why not? I love this filly, and she has been very, very good lately. And then also, West 52nd, a bit of a screw up on my part tonight. I'm going to drive him a little more aggressively tonight, and we'll see how he behaves. So that's where we're at right now. I'm going to get pick up a set of hobbles really quick. I'm going to talk to Jason, and then I'm going to go get something to eat. I'm going to sneak over to get something to eat, and then I'll be back for the races. So I'll talk to you soon. Tomorrow, we're at the fair. I am going to say it right now. I will be utterly shocked if Voyage of Ice and Fire does not look good tomorrow. Change a few things with him. It's game on tomorrow. Uh, and then also uh, Confederate Cruiser. So we're coming into having another good week. We had a great start to the week. We had a great day today. Uh, I know you guys saw that uh, break from Three Point last night. And between social media and the emails I received, you know what happened. Uh, you can go back and look at the race. He got headbutted coming to the half. Bit of a cheap move in a two-year-old race. But it's racing, I guess. It's not the end of the world. Uh, onward and upward from here. So... About to get the rest of the race card underway, or rest, the rest of the night underway. It's been a good start to the good start to the to the week. We'll talk to you all very soon.